Hey, what up? It's your boy, Zach Aurelius, here, and I've got this month's episode of Gumplin News. This is episode 30 for uh, May 2017, and this month's episode is coming a little bit late because I wanted to wait for the Shizuoka Kahabi show, which just started today, and we got a whole lot of news to talk about, so I'm going to do this month's episode of Gumplin News just as a kind of light episode again, but that just means basically instead of five parts, I'm going to do it all as one part. But I am going to make it a little bit easier for you guys and put some time codes down in the video information down below so you can skip around a little bit if you want because I'm sure this is going to still be quite long because there's a lot of new stuff to talk about. So let us get into it. Ah, and also I will not be doing a kind of featured section at the end, which I usually do, but again, just because there's a lot of stuff to talk about, I uh, just want to kind of get through a lot of that and then uh, a little bit of news, a couple of third party stuff. Uh, things that I want to talk to you guys about, but let's just get into it because I want to get this stuff talked about and shared with you guys as soon as possible because it's just a lot of amazing, exciting stuff that we had announced today. So, all right, so first thing is that uh, Gundam Build Fighters is back with two new series, actually, kind of uh, two new things. I guess we don't really know quite exactly what they're going to be exactly yet. The first thing is uh, going to build fighters battle log. And apparently what that's going to be is either a short film or a series of short films, basically with the, it says uh, with the concept of a, of a dream battle, I guess. So I don't re really know what exactly those are going to be, but that's not going to be like a full series or anything, it seems like. Uh, and I don't know what exactly the format for releasing those short films is going to be, but that'll be something. We'll be hearing more about that over the next couple months, I'm sure. And then the other one is uh, GM's Counterattack, or Jim's Counterattack anyway, but it's spelled with the GM, not the name Jim. Don't want you guys to get confused. Uh, this one uh, does appear like it's maybe going to be a, a full series. This one I kind of even understand less about exactly what it's going to be, but this one does seem to be like the one that is going to be more of a, a thing. So maybe this is going to be a full series, which um, I know I can understand there's a lot of mixed opinions on this. There's a lot of people who love Build Fighters and are probably super excited about a third series, a third season, or just anything more. And there's a lot of people who I'm sure are quite tired of Build Fighters and wish that Bandai or Sunrise would do something different. Uh, and I'm kind of on the fence. I mean, like, if it's cool, then I'll like it, but uh, I, I have my doubts. I mean, I kind of wish that they would move on and do something else, but... Uh, they're not, I mean, they're just not, so this is what we have to work with. Uh, on the plus side, we are getting some cool kits out of it that we've seen so far, so we'll get to all the kits and stuff later. Uh, right now, I just kind of want to talk about this series. So, I mean, it is going to have the return of uh, Sei Iori and it's like some of the original cast, so apparently this is going to be taking place like after season one, but before season two, kind of in between there apparently. So we'll see more about that, uh, I guess probably starting end of summer, beginning of fall, I suppose. So right now I don't really know too much though, unfortunately. Next about uh, Gundam Thunderbolt Episode 7 is going to be coming out at the end of May, May 31st. Uh, just for any of you guys who are following Gundam Thunderbolt, so you all should be, as long as you can watch it on YouTube in your country. Uh, you should be taking advantage and watching that. It's a fantastic series. And the seventh episode looks like it's going to be really cool. It's going to have that like squad of like custom art guys that look pretty awesome. and. That's a lot to say that Ak guys look pretty awesome. I think most people don't really think that they look too awesome. But uh, And then there's also going to be that really awesome Thunderbolt goof with like that flight backpack that looks really cool. So we've already seen that. There's been like some like resin conversion kits for that already that have been out. But really, really hoping that Bandai uh, does an HD version of that Thunderbolt goof because that would be pretty awesome. We'll have to see, but that is when that will be coming out. Also, the Gundam, the Origin Episode 5, Clash at Loom, will be premiering on September 2nd. So I'm sure probably at the premiere in Japan, anyway, at the movie theaters, you'll be able to get some probably exclusive merchandise or exclusive, exclusive kits or something. As far as I've seen, there hasn't been any announcement as to what that will be, but it's usually like some like sparkly clear version of some HG kit or metallic version or something like that. So... Um, We'll have to see about that, but anyway, that means that that episode will probably be streaming online at the same time as well, so again, we'll be able to catch that at the beginning of September. Looking forward to that as well. Uh, we do have a couple of new kits coming out from The Origin as well. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, and then just for the other live shows that I do and that I'm involved with, uh, I have Gumpla Talk 
being the first one. Our episode of Gumpla Talk this month is scheduled, uh, tentatively scheduled for uh, Saturday, May 20th in New York, uh, kind of the East Coast, United States. Here in uh, this side of the world, uh, Tokyo, Korea, is going to be Sunday the 21st. So that weekend, 20th, 21st, is when uh, this month's episode of Gumpla Talk is going to be. Uh, we've got kind of a plan, but it's not totally set yet, so we won't kind of talk too much about that. But uh, it will also involve some recap of Shizuoka as well, hopefully with someone who was there to talk to us about it. So again, it's not totally set yet, but uh, that is going to be, yeah, at that time. Again, just follow our Facebook page to stay updated for that Gumpla Talk on Facebook. And then also G Check, the show that I do with Josh Dara, who is also on Gumpla Talk. Uh, this month's episode of G Check is going to be May 26th, uh, Friday evening. Again, that's kind of scheduled to change. Again, if we have to change Gumpla Talk to the next weekend, then we're, we'll change G Check to the back to the previous weekend, just so that those are on opposite weekends. So, anyway, I'll let you guys know about that if there's any change. And again, I'll post up the link for that video. So you guys can watch that live on my Facebook page. So again, just follow my Facebook page there. Uh, you can set the notifications for that. So when I post something, uh, you can be sure to watch G-Check live because we'll be uh, continuing to look at some of the model kits that were submitted by you guys. And then you guys can just sort of uh, enjoy watching that live if you want, or you can watch it later. Anyway, and the last thing is my uh, Builder Interviews series. So my next episode is going to be with uh, Don Serratos, aka DC23. He's a modeler from the Philippines. So you guys may know him. He hasn't been as active recently, but uh, he has a pretty awesome blog and he's done a very wide array of uh, different modeling artworks. So you can check that all out like on his blog and Facebook page and stuff. Um, I haven't set the date yet exactly for when that interview will be, so again, just make sure you follow my Facebook page. I'll post up about that when that is set, but I'll be interviewing Don sometime before the end of this month. So if you guys want to check that out, and if you guys want to watch it live and have a chance to ask some questions to Don live, you can, uh, again, just make sure you follow my Facebook page. So that is it for all the news. Now let's get into all the big Shizuoka announcements. There's a whole lot of really cool stuff to talk about. Um, I want to get through all the P Bandai stuff first, but before I get into that, uh, the thing, the one kit that really shocked and surprised me the most, that really blew me away when I first saw the news about this, was the Mega Size Unicorn Gundam. First of all, just because I thought the Mega Size line was just dead, uh, I didn't think that they would be going back to it, but they are going back to it and in a really big way. They're going to be doing the Unicorn Gundam in destroy mode. It's I'm 99% positive this is not going to transform, so you know it would be nice if they would make two different versions, a unicorn mode and a destroy mode, but so far it looks like they're probably just only going to be making the destroy mode, probably because it's going to coincide with the 1 to 1, -to -one scale unicorn Gundam in Daiba in Tokyo, which is more than likely also going to be just in destroy mode, so it, they're probably going to make it styled very similar to the 1 to 1 scale Gundam, and that's kind of going to be the thing with that. But uh, this is going to be out in August for 10,000 yen, definitely very pricey, it's, but still that's cheaper than the perfect grade and it's larger. I uh, haven't seen exactly what all this comes with yet either. Uh, we've seen it pictured with the Beam Magnum, but I'd say it's probably safe to assume that it comes with at least uh, Beam Saber and probably a uh, Hyper Bazooka, but uh, we don't know. I would say probably not the Beam Gatling guns. Uh, but uh, Beam, Magnum, and Bazooka, I think it's probably safe safe to guess that, but we'll just have to see. Anyway, that looks awesome. Uh, actually, I'm really quite excited about that. The Mega Size, it's going to be huge like this. I mean, the Perfect Grade is already like, really big, but it's going to be really, 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 really big. I don't know where I'm going to put that, but it's going to be an awesome kit regardless. So, all right, with that out of the way, let's get into the all this P-Bandai stuff, get the P-Bandai stuff out of the way, and then uh, move into the other stuff. So P-Bandai stuff is the P-Bandai Master Grade Cast Falls Gundam version 3.0. So there's already a Master Grade Cast Falls Gundam kit out there, but I believe that's based on the 1.5, the Master Grade 1.5 kit, which is pretty old at this point. So this would be a version that's based on the 3.0 Master Grade, so it would be much nicer and newer, a lot more like color separation there, the color separation between the different tones of red and everything does look really nice for this kit. This is going to be out in August for 4,500 yen. A lot of really cool markings on the kit as well, but 
I haven't seen if those are going to be uh, water slides or just stickers. Hopefully those are going to be water slides, but uh, we'll have to wait and see for sure. I guess once we get like the official like uh, images, which will probably come out like the next day after I release this video. That's how it usually goes. But um, anyway, at the moment, no, I don't know exactly about that. But uh, there's also going to be a P Bandai Master Grade Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Shin Matsunaga Custom Type out in June for 4,500 yen. This was actually announced a couple weeks ago, so this is not exactly new from Shizuoka, but uh, I haven't talked about this yet. So this is just a kind of different version of the uh, high mobility type Shin Matsunaga Custom Zaku, and I really like this a lot. I like this a lot better than the original Shin Matsunaga Zaku. The original is just, I don't find appealing at all. It's all white and then like the blue markings and like the wolf head. I mean. I can understand why some people like that, it just doesn't appeal to me. This one though I think looks a lot better. Uh, the blue accent on the feet is a bit strange, but I really like the uh, two spiked shoulders and the uh, that uh, kanji white wolf decal for the shoulders is going to look super nice, so really looking forward to that kit. Personally, there's also going to be, this is a new announcement from Shizuoka, is the P-Bandai Master Grade uh, Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Masa, uh, Masaya Nakagawa custom version. Uh, just another one kind of in this line of MSV Ace Zaku 2 high mobility type kits that they're doing. This one is going to be out in August for 4,500 yen. Pretty interesting color scheme for this one as well. Not really quite as interested in this. Personally, I'll probably pass on this one. But uh, the cool thing is it showed that they're doing this whole like Ace pilot log thing that's going to be starting in uh, May, end of May. 26th. I guess that's going to be a new MSVR manga, I think, or a new like MSVR serialization that's going to be going in uh, Gundam Ace magazine, it looks like, from what I can see uh, from the pictures of the show. And also we can see there's, there's like a little silhouette image there for a new variant that's going to be coming in the summer, so I guess just a new Ace custom color type Zaku 2 that will be coming later in the summer, probably once again a P-Bandai kit, but uh, for those people who are enjoying collecting those, I have have a couple of them, and I think, you know, some of them are, are cool, some of them I've passed on, but uh, those are pretty fun, I think. Uh, next, there's the P-Bandai Master Grade 00 XN Riser out in July for 8,000 yen. This is, uh, from what I can tell, I'm not the biggest 00 connoisseur, so I, I could be missing something, but... From what I can tell, this is basically just the double O riser with like a, a new set of swords, which is like can be combined into one big, huge, giant sword. So sort of similar to like the Astray Blue Frame D, I think it was that had like that uh, huge, giant sword like that. So uh, yeah, that's I mean, but the backpack looks really insane with everything on the like the double O riser and the new sword blades on there. It just the backpack looks really crazy. Uh, so that looks really cool and does have like a little stand base for that as well to help hold up the backpack when you have it just standing on the ground. So that'll be useful I suppose. 8,000 yen though is pretty pricey for sure, like that's going to be a, a big chunk of change if you guys are wanting that. But I know there's a, obviously a lot of Double O Riser fans out there and I'll admit it does look pretty awesome. The new sword does look cool, so that'd be pretty nice. There is also going to be a P Bandai Advanced Jinx or Advanced GNX. I always say GNX, but I know a lot of people say Jinx. So uh, this is this is also was announced a couple weeks ago, but uh, I'm just going to talk about it now. This is going to be out in July for 4,200 yen. Uh, pretty interesting variation of the GNX. Uh, I think I still kind of prefer the original, just the regular Master Grade version. But this one does have quite a few new parts in it. So like. Aside from some P Bandai kits where it's just like a color swap and like one or two new parts, this one does have quite a few new parts to it. So, if you are a fan of this design, I would not hesitate to get this kit because it's only going to be more expensive later. So, if you really like that, uh, that's I think paying a little bit extra to get this as a P Bandai kit is going to be worth it rather than like if you really wanted that design to actually like custom scratch build all those parts to make that, so that's, a, that's a lot of time, so I would rather just pay a little bit more to get this kit. Uh, Alright, getting into some HG stuff, P Bandai HGUC Jagan D-Type Camouflage version, it's coming out in July for 1800 yen, yet another P Bandai HGUC <laughs> Jagan variant, there's probably been like 10 or 12, 15 of these now already, but uh, why not one more? 
This one has like the Marasai's rifle and this really cool camo pattern, but I'm pretty certain that those, like all that camouflage is just going to be stickers on the kit. So, I mean, there's no way for them to actually mold that like that without making a totally new mold, which it would be really complicated. And I'm sure they're not going to do that. Uh, so those could be water slides, but again, highly, highly doubt that for a P Bandai HG release. We never get water slides for P Bandai HG releases. So pretty certain those are going to be stickers. On the plus side, what you can do with that is if you are planning on painting that, you can use uh, like the, the negative of the sticker as a mask, and then you've already got your mask right there. So that's kind of one thing that you can do, or you could use the stickers and do it like reverse, but um, you can use the stickers as masking to paint that is kind of one of the positives of that, of that I suppose. It's a really cool looking design for sure. I really like the colors and the camo pattern it looks really good on that, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be stickers. Uh, then P Bandai HGUC GM Sniper. This is something we saw back in last November at the Expo on display, but it's finally been officially uh, announced as a release in June for 1500 yen, basically just the uh, HGUC Ground GM that came out in January. And it just has uh, a couple new parts, probably a new hand part and new parts, obviously, for the rifle. Also has new parts for the missile launcher, which the original Ground GM did not have. So that's pretty awesome that that's being included with this kit. So it is more than just the new sniper rifle. So that's nice. Uh, but if you guys follow my channel, I recently, you know, I recently got the old GM sniper kit and planning on using that rifle to just make one of, of my own. But... Uh, for 1500 yen, I mean, if, if you can get it anywhere close to the list price, then that's definitely not a bad deal. It's a really, really nice kit. So that's cool. Uh, also, a P Bandai HG Build Fighters Hambrabi Suban. This is a really interesting design. And when I first saw this, I didn't realize it was a uh, Build Fighters kit. I thought this was just like re some really obscure uh, version of the Hambrabi, like from some manga or something. But it turns out it's from Build Fighters, which makes a lot of sense now, actually. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, definitely has a lot of the Hammurabi look still to it, but it has a very different head and like backpack and stuff going on, but still has a lot of the similar styling. It's all purple, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's a very interesting variant of the Hammurabi. So that'll be out in August for 1800 yen. And it's also kind of interesting that they're making that as a P Bandai kit because, uh, for like HD Build Fighters kits, they seem to just like, just put out anything even if it's just like a variation like that, they'll just put it out as just a normal kit in the Build Fighters line. That seems to be how it's been. There's been like actually quite few that I can remember or that I can think of off the top of my head. There's been very few HD Build Fighters uh, P Bandai kits. There's like very few and far between. Like the High New Influx thing was one, and I think there's been like a couple, but uh, not really all that many. The Turnation, but uh, basically, I'm I'm really surprised actually that this is a a P Bandai kit and not a standard release, basically is my point. Uh, a couple of kits that I'm not surprised at all are P Bandai kits are the HG Build Fighters, uh, or sorry, the HG Iron Blood Orphans uh, EO Frame Shiden Customs. There's two, there's the Riden Go and the Orga Custom. So basically these are just kind of stuff that you can kind of make on your own. The Orga Customs uh, shield on the arm, I think that's a totally new part, but uh, everything else, like the Riden Go, I think Thing. Oh, that, that has a custom uh, new mask to it, I think. So there'll be like one new part in each of these kits, basically. Uh, and then it's just, you know, different colors, color swaps, and uh, it has the inclusion of some of the other, or the other new parts, I guess. I guess there's other new parts like that were from the previous P Bandai kit of the uh, Shiden. So yeah, these are cool variants anyway. So these are both going to be out in July for 1,200 yen each. So 1,200 yen, I mean, that's cheap. Again, if you can get them for anywhere near that list price, uh, definitely is going to save you a lot of trouble of having to scratch build those new parts. So that'll be pretty nice. Alrighty, but now that we're finally through all the P Bandai stuff, we can get into the fun stuff, the stuff that is actually going to be widely available for all of us to get. And that is, the first thing is the real grade unicorn gun. This is also something that was announced a week or two before Shizuoka, so it wasn't totally new, but we actually got to see it at Shizuoka and not just like a, a gray, it was like prototype, but we saw like the actual kit and then we saw like a uh, runner, well, at least the runner of the inner frame anyway, like the real grade inner frame runner. And uh, it looks pretty cool. 
I mean, obviously, a lot of people are really concerned uh, about the transformation of this, the transformation from unicorn mode to destroy mode, and how flimsy that's going to make the kit. Um, I mean, I'm sort of concerned about that, but at the same time, not really all that much. Uh, with the Masquerade kit, like, there was a couple of parts of the Masquerade that were a little bit kind of tricky, but really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, if anything, the, the articulation was, I mean, the transformation hindered the articulation more than it really made the kit, like, a mess to try to pose. I mean, it was just a really heavy kit, for one. Uh, so, in real grade form, I'm sure the joints are going to be a lot stronger than they were on the Master Grade, so... Uh, that the like the weight issue won't be a problem the articulation being him being hindered by the transformation is definitely possible but we'll just have to see kind of the thing for me about this though is i just don't really see what the real grade is going to offer that isn't available in like other kits like i guess it's going to have a little bit more surface detail than the hg version and i guess that's going to be something but and i mean with the hg version if you want a unicorn mode and destroy mode you have to buy two separate kits or with the real grade you can just buy one kit but for the price of the real grade it's probably going to cost almost the same as buying two high grade kits and personally i think the like the proportions and the just styling of the, of the high grade kits is so good uh, that the real grade kit i think can't really improve on the proportions anyway so it's just going to improve i guess on um, just the details on the kits which is something that you know you may or may not care about on the unicorn gundam i think personally i don't really care about this little tiny extra little details on it it's just a design that i think doesn't really need that in my personal opinion they also are going to of course do like the two-tone color that is famous in the real grade line which i think with the with the unicorn gundam's design is something that you can ruin the design really fast by trying to make it not all one color like it is and from what we've seen of the images so far the two-tone white doesn't look too bad because it's super hard to notice actually so as long as it's really really not easily noticeable then i think it'll be okay but if it's noticeable at all then personally i think that that is not going to look good but uh we'll just have to see i, I mean at so far all we've seen is just a, a few images of it just kind of standing there in unicorn mode and destroy mode and it looks fine um uh, but again i think I'm just not really all that excited about it. I just don't really know what it's really going to bring to the table uh, that other versions don't have. So like like I said, I think the HD version looks great. The Master Grade version is able to transform and also looks great. It's kind of a little bit wonky to deal with, but uh, it's a fine enough kit despite it being now eight years old. So uh, I don't know about this real grade kit. And of course, the one thing that we know is going to happen is that there are going to be other variants of the kit. I would assume it's probably safe to assume that uh, probably the Banshee or Banshee Norn will be just a standard release, but then of course there will be inevitably uh, P-Bandai variants and other Expo exclusive variants and uh, new Gundam base variants at what was formerly Gundam Front Tokyo will now be Gundam base. There will be other variants of it there as well. So. Yes, there's going to be a lot more milking of the unicorn now in real grade form. So we have that to look forward to. So I don't know how exciting this is, sort of, kind of, but yeah, we have real grade unicorn that's coming. It is cool that the uh, for the for the frame they're making it uh, gray, like the normal inner frame color, and then like the cycle frame is pink. So like kind of with the real grade astray red frame, how they made it uh, white and red mixed together. This one is uh, clear pink and gray mixed together for that frame. So that'll be interesting for sure to see how that comes out. We do also have a bunch of new, not really a bunch of new, but uh, at least a full view now of the high resolution model 100 scale wing Gundam Zero EW. So this is gonna be out in September for 1200 yen. I don't know if I said, sorry, just going back to the real grade unicorn is out in August for 3800 yen. Uh, the high res wing Gundam is out in September for 12,000 yen, so very, very expensive. It's actually cheaper than I expected it to be. I was expecting more like 1,500 or six, uh, uh, 15,000 or 12,000 uh, yen for this, so it's actually cheaper than I was expecting. Um, and 
I really liked the design at first, but this is going just like it with the Barbatos, with the high-res Barbatos. As soon as I saw the high-res Barbatos design, I really liked it a lot. And like when we saw it at first, I was really into it. But then the more I looked at it, I was not really into it as much. And the same thing's kind of happening with me the more that I look at this high-resolution Wing Gundam as well. Like the more I look at it, the more I notice aspects of the design that I really don't like. There's a lot of aspects of the design that I really like a lot. Um, especially in the legs. I think the legs look really super good. I like the extra bulk added to the legs and just like the extra kind of angles and different uh, color tones in it look really nice. Uh, but there's some certain aspects of the kit that I'm just not really quite as into. So I'm probably definitely not going to be buying this, but um, it does look interesting, I suppose, for people who are big fans of the Wing Zero. Uh, we did finally also get a prototype of the Master Grade Double Zeta Gundam Verka. This is going to be out in September for 6,000 yen. This one is also cheaper than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting this to be seven or 8,000 yen, but 6,000 yen for this is, uh, seems like it's going to be very reasonable. So it's a very large kit, the Double Zeta, and it's a Verka, so of course it's going to have a lot of water side decals and stuff as well. Uh, more than likely going to be transforming. I think if they decided not to make it transform, personally I would be totally fine with that and have it just just a nice solid Gundam form, but it's probably going to transform, so considering it has all that engineering built into it, 6,000 yen seems quite reasonable for this. So, in September, not too long to wait. I was thinking they could make this come out all the way at the end of the year in December, but it'd be nice not to have to wait that long and have this in September. That'll be cool. But then uh, what's going to be the big kit out in December though? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So anyway, this looks really good. I'm just not really that big of a fan of just the regular Double Zeta. The full armor Double Zeta, the Faz, I really like that. Uh, especially just because of that huge cannon. But uh, the just normal Double Zeta, not really all that appealing to me usually. But this actually looks really good. I'm actually really surprised at how much I like the look of this kit so far. I mean, I don't really like just the standard Gundam colors for it. So I'm sure once we see it in color, I'm going to kind of, my interest is going to go down a little bit. But uh, as it is now, I'm actually quite excited about this kit. And I think it's looking quite good. I think Kotoki has done a really nice job on the uh, proportions of this kit. It looks really good. Uh, as for a full armor version of this, could that be coming out as a P-Bandai exclusive? Probably. Uh, but then again, I really thought that we were going to be getting like... Uh, some sort of like Assault Buster add-on set for the Master Grade V2 Gundam and that never actually happened. So, I don't know, they might have plans for a full armor set for the Double Zeta and it just depends on maybe how successful the kit launches, whether they're going to actually go through with uh, releasing that or not. So, I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, next, of course, we saw the Master Grade Justice Gundam. This is not really anything new, but we just kind of saw it there uh, on display. That was That's going to be out in June. Soon enough for 4,800 yen. Looks really nice, of course, all the details there. Really love the design of the legs of that Gundam. Uh, the knees going into like the uh, front ankle armor and the feet all looks really nice. Uh, I just really quite like the design of that Gundam in general. The backpack, though, is, I'm kind of not really all that into. But uh, the Gundam itself looks pretty cool, so I'll have to see about doing something cool with that. Next, we finally got some really nice uh, images and like full display of the RE100 Hamahama. So the Hamahama was just kind of like in release limbo for a long time and then finally now we're getting uh, a lot of really nice uh, images of that. This is going to be out in July for 4,500 yen, so a little bit more expensive uh, for the RE100 kits. They're usually around 3,500 yen, so 4,500 is a little bit more expensive, but this one uh, is of course going to be kind of large like a lot of them have been, but it's got the like wire gimmicks of the arm going off. I mean, you guys will probably recognize that this is very similar to the Rosen Zulu, which the Rosen Zulu is based off of the Hamahama, so that's kind of where that comes from. So it has like the claw hands, the wire guided claws, and it has a very similar shield and very similar sort of just like overall shape of the design. The really huge shoulders, the long thin legs, like that. So uh, really cool. I'm actually really really looking forward to that. It's a really odd design from uh, Double Zeta series and I think the this version of the design I think they've done a really good job of making it look really like modern and appealing They're very angular and all the colors and molding and everything looks really super nice on that so I'm really looking forward to that RE kit for sure. We did also see 
However, this uh, kind of teaser image, and I'm not actually too sure at the moment of how official this is because I just saw this posted on Twitter. Um, uh, this was of uh, possibly the next RE100 kit, which looks like the outline of a Zoc. And not really too excited about that, to be honest. Uh, we'll have to see how that comes out. And again, I'm not totally sure of, the, uh, of how official this is at this moment, but if this does end up being the next RE kit, That'll be interesting, and uh, we'll have to see. It's going to take some sort of miracle to make that actually look appealing to me, to be honest, because the Zoc is such a weird and ugly design. But that may be happening. Anyway, we'll have to see about that. Uh, now getting into some of the HG stuff. HG, the origin, Zaku 2 Type-C slash C5. So uh, not it's, kind of, it's the standard release Zaku 2, but a slightly different version of the standard Zaku 2. Uh, this is going to be out in September for 1800 yen. Basically, it's just a remold of the Shars Zaku 2 Origin kit. Uh, it also includes the uh, belt fed Zaku machine gun, the Zaku bazooka. And it has this one new part for it that we can see. It looks like probably maybe just only, only this one new part. But it's a really cool part that's like on the back of the arm. It's kind of like an extra shield layer there on like the back of the arm that looks really, really cool actually for just a very small addition of one new part. It looks cool, so I'm actually really looking forward to this. And just that kit is such a really nice kit. And although I've been kind of admittedly a little bit tired of building that same kit over and over again in the uh, HD The Origin line, it is a really nice kit, and it does look really, really good in those uh, just standard Zaku green colors. So I'm actually really, really quite excited about that, to be honest. Uh, this next one I'm also really excited about is the HD The Origin MSD kit of the black local type Gundam North American Front version. Uh, so this is just a kind of variant of the Gundam local type and just in black. And for the most part, it seems like kind of the most, the only really new thing about it is the backpack. It kind of has that uh, Gundam the Origin style backpack cannon on it, which is really cool. And I'm actually really looking forward to this as well, just because that, uh, that Gundam local type is such a really nice kit. Uh, this is going to be out in October for 2,000 yen. And um, yeah, I'm sure, unfortunately, those green parts are just going to, uh, not green, those orange stripe parts are probably just going to be stickers, unfortunately, but uh, we'll have to see about that. Anyway, it'll just be cool. Really hoping that they maybe release, it'll probably be, if they release it, a P Bandai variant of like that kind of a gold yellowish version of this as well, which is basically exactly the same as this. So it could just paint the black version in gold and then have this, but it'll be interesting to see if they ever release this as a P Bandai variant or something that uh, kind of gold version also looks really cool. All right, into uh, HGUC, HGUC Gundam Blue Destiny, Unit 1. It's going to be out in August for 1,600 yen. This is another one that we saw back in uh, at the expo in last year in November, but we finally got some news about that. And we can see it in full color, stickers, everything's on there, and we can even see, like, they've even got all the runners on display behind the kit, and yet it's not coming out until August. Seems a bit strange, so... It seems the kit looks like it's like ready to go like next week, but uh, we're gonna have to wait a few months apparently for that to be actually be coming out. Also, interestingly, and I saw someone post about this on Twitter as well, pointing out the differences between uh, the original prototype that they showed back in November and the kit now. And actually, the kit that they had on display, that there was actually two different kind of details on the head of two different uh, kits they had. One of like the exam mode, like on with like the red eyes and everything, red cameras, and the other one just like this kind of standard version. Uh, and like the head uh, part was different, it's kind of odd, so I don't know if maybe it's going to come with different option parts for that you can choose. Maybe I'm not really the, the Blue Destiny expert, I'd have to ask our buddy Tim at Child of Mecca, he's the, he's the Blue, S Blue Destiny expert there, so anyway, uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty interesting kit, though I'm not really a big fan of that all blue all blue color scheme. It's just not really appealing for me. But I think painted up in some new colors, I'll probably end up liking the kit a lot more. Uh, next, we have the HGUC Ifrit Schneid. This one was definitely a little bit of a surprise because actually at the same time we saw the Blue Destiny last November, we saw a prototype of the HGUC Ifrit Kai, just the regular Ifrit Custom. But it turns out that maybe that one will maybe be coming out later as a probably P Bandai release, it, we can assume. 
And the standard release is gonna be the Efreet Schneid, so it's kind of like opposite of what they do with the RE100 kits. So this actually looks really cool as well. I'm sure the nice thing about this will be it'll probably have much better articulation than the RE kit had, but uh, just less details, of course. So it, it is coming with uh, all of the different uh, knives or heat darts. And then it has the bazooka as well, which will be cool. And it looks like uh, two of the heat darts are either in like some weird like metallic orange or maybe clear orange. It's kind of really hard to tell from the picture if those are actually clear orange. I think maybe they are, but it's kind of hard to tell. And we don't really know. I mean, all of these images are, they look like it, the kit is actually painted. So we don't know about the actual color separation, what this kit is going to look like uh, totally unpainted, just straight out of the box. It probably won't look quite this nice. But uh, also the heat darts look really dull, really round. So definitely going to have to get your file out and just kind of sharpen those up to make them look a lot better. But it is an HG kit, so kind of have to expect that. Anyway, I'm really excited about that. Even though I have the RE100 kits, I'm really looking forward to the HG release as well. Uh, next, uh, getting to going to Build Fighters. So we have, of course, with the revival of some new Build Fighters animation coming out, we have a whole lot of new Build Fighters kits coming out now as well. So kind of Build Fighters is back with a vengeance. And so the first one is the HG Build Fighters Nin Pulse Gundam. So I guess it's basically a mix of like Ninja and Impulse Gundam because it's based on the Impulse Gundam and it has this very kind of Ninja styling going on to it. So. A lot of people have said that it looks like it's definitely like a Nils Nielsen style design, similar to the Sengoku Astray. Uh, also, it looks like the Epion, of course, it, yeah, it looks like it in the colors, but in the actual shape, not really all that much. But uh, yeah, it has some like clear green effect parts and stuff for like different blades and things like that. And it's a kind of interesting design. Uh, it looks like though it's also going to be molded in like that high gloss plastic, like similar to what they do with the RG Shinanju and the RG uh, Astray uh, Amatsumina. It looks like that's going to be the case, which I'm not really too into. That I'm not really a big fan of that high gloss plastic, and I kind of wish Bandai would stop trying that, but it looks like maybe that's what they're going to do with this kit. Anyway, it'll be out in July for 2,000 yen, so it looks interesting. I'm interested to see some more about that um, when it gets closer to coming out. There's also going to be an HG Build Fighters China guy out in July as well for 2200 yen. So Bandai is continuing to try out some kind of like girl Gumpla designs. And I really think that they should have thought about this name a little bit more before they decided to name it China guy. It's a trap. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it does look cool. I mean, you don't have to have the bear head on it, which is nice. So you can have the bear head off and just have just her normal head. And even and even then, for her normal head, you can choose the headband. It has just like a regular standard like pink headband or a headband with bear ears on it. So some pretty cool options and stuff with this, I guess. It has different options for the arms as well, like like big fluffy, puffy arm things, sort of similar to like a bear guy. And then just like regular arms as well, which actually look really kind of robot-like. Well, no, I guess it is a robot, but... Uh, the regular arms look a bit strange to me, to be honest. But it looks like an interesting kit, for sure. So we'll see. It also has option parts for the glasses, whether you want to have uh, glasses. Or I guess it's just, you have the option of putting like the actual clear lens part into the glass or not. So it'll be an interesting kit, for sure. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of interesting customs of that. Next, uh, we had the HG Build Fighters Hyper... Gyanko. This one I'm really looking forward to. And uh, uh, yeah, so when they made this, uh, when they made the uh, Super Fumina, I was really, really hoping that they would do something similar with Gyanko, and they are really looking forward to this. It's basically just, of course, the Gyanko mixed with Gyan kind of styling parts. So it has like Gyan shields and some sort of Gyan style armor around on it as well. So. Unfortunately, the face looks a little odd on this one, and the face doesn't really look quite right, but hopefully they change it, or, you know, maybe they would take some notes from Kotobukiya and actually supply multiple face part options that you can choose from. Would be nice, but I don't think they're going to do that because they haven't shown it off at the expo. You'd think if they were going to actually include those, they would have those on display as, like, a big sales point for the kit, but... It looks like there's not going to be any different face options, but still really looking forward to that kit coming out in August for 2200 yen. So August uh, will be a really nice month, I think, uh, because there's also this next kit coming out as well. This is the HG Build Fighters uh, Jim Jim, or GM GM. 
This one's also going to be out in August for 1600 yen and looks super, super cool. It's just like a Build Fighters version of the gym. It looks like a totally new design, so it's not going to be like recycling anything. And it's a really, really cool take on the gym, I think. It's just like the standard gym colors and everything, but it's like very sleek looking for sure. And it uh, comes with some pretty cool options as well. It has three different head options that you can use for that. So if you get three of the kit, then you could have like one of each like that. And it's a pretty basic weapons, but just looks like a really nice, just like base kit for doing some really cool customs. And I'm sure the articulation is going to be really cool because it's a really simple design. So I'm really, really looking forward to that kit as well. There is also going to be an HG build custom set of the Jim Jim weapons. It's just a weapon set for that kit or for whatever you want, of course. So that's also going to be out in August as well for 600 yen. It's basically just some weapons. One is like a Jim sniper rifle kind of rifle. Another one's this more like kind of assault rifle kind of rifle. Another one's kind of smaller like handgun. And I don't know, it kind of looks like it's like one gun that you can make into different forms by using different option parts for it. So it'll be cool to see what that's actually all about. But the look, the weapons that you can make from that set do look pretty cool. So that'll be, I think if you're planning on getting that Jim Jim kit, I'd say getting that weapon set is probably going to be essential because it looks really cool. All right, then next we have uh, some new HD Build Fighters Gundam. It's just called HD Build Fighters New Gundam as just a tentative name, not like new as in like the new NU, but N-E-W, a new Gundam that's coming out. Just actually, they just don't have a name or they just don't want to release the name for it yet. But it basically looks like a kind of new evolution of the uh, Burning Gundam. So that'll be interesting to see how that actually ties into that. But this is going to be out in August for 1600 yen. So this one's probably going to be from the Battle Log series. I would imagine, and yeah, I'm not into this at all, to be honest. I really think that this kit looks ugly. Uh, yeah, I don't really like the look of that at all, and I'm not looking forward to it, really, at this point. Um, yeah, sort of right up there, kind of with the Scramble Gundam, where it just looks like a really slopped together design, not inspired at all, it just looks lazy, but I don't know, we'll see. There's also a teaser image for a new version of an HD Build Fighters Fumina. It looks like a kind of Fumina, kind of uh, star build strike, uh, no kind of, uh, sorry, star winning, S her like SD kit mixed with like the Fumina. So like a star winning version of the Fumina. So um, yeah, fans of the Super Fumina and it's many different variations we've had so far. We've got at least one more coming out with that kit and uh, should be interesting. It is also going to be HD Build Custom Ninpulse Beam Effect Parts set out in July. Sorry, I should have mentioned this when we talked about the Ninpulse Gundam, but uh, it's the Beam Effect Parts set uh, with some different Beam Effect Parts that you can probably use for a lot of different things, but it's kind of like sort of meant for the Ninpulse Gundam. Again, for 600 yen for this, so for a, a bunch of effect parts, 600 yen seems maybe a little bit... Uh, a little bit high, but that seems like kind of basically as low as Bandai possibly goes, it seems so. It'll be interesting though, I mean, that could be a lot better than it seems, and there's a, some pretty cool looking effect parts in there, so that'll be nice. Uh, there was some other stuff teased, there was uh, four new HG Build Fighters kits teased in their HG Build Fighters top secret section, where it's like basically impossible to actually even see any sort of like silhouette or shape of what those kits even look like. But uh, these also apparently are going to be kind of uh, from the uh, battle log short videos, short films is what those are going to be from apparently. And also there was a kind of silhouette of two other new mobile suits that I think uh, are also from battle log. And one of them looks very much like a Zaku, very much like an origin Zaku to be honest. And the other one looks very much like, like maybe kind of like based on the Reborns Gundam or something from Gundam Age sort of is what that kind of looks like. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, some interesting silhouettes there. Oh, those, or those silhouettes might not be related at all and they're just kind of put those there as silhouettes like there's two more kits coming, but we're not going to actually show what the silhouette of them is. Uh, but just here's just two like random silhouettes we'll just throw up there just so you guys get the idea. All right, and that is pretty much it for all of the new stuff. Uh, there's just a couple other things. We had the HG Gundam Tristan was on display there as well. 
Also not really getting too excited about that because it's based on the HTUC Alex, which is from 2004, which is now 13 years old. So it's a pretty old and dated HG kit that this kit is based off of. And you can definitely see that in the kit when they show like posed images of it. Doesn't really look like the articulation is gonna be the strong point of this kit or the details either for that matter. It looks just kind of not that great, unfortunately. This is gonna be out in June for 1500 yen. But I mean, as long as it looks cool just standing there, it'll be okay, but I think it's still gonna take a lot of work to make it to look cool uh, compared to just how it is now, how it's looking now, it's just not really looking all that exciting. Uh, then getting into, uh, that's kind of the end of all the Gunpla stuff. There is now some other things I want to talk to you guys about. Some Gundam decals. This was also kind of, uh, these were announced and like available for pre-order a few weeks ago. But I uh, just kind of want to remind you guys, in case you missed this, the Gundam decals number 103 through 108 uh, are being shown here. These are going to be out in June for 380 yen each, so not too bad. 380 yen for the small. I'm guessing it's really not going to be all that big like this or something. These are for 1144 scale kits. Uh, there's uh, two different I Iron Blood Orphans sets. So RBO set one, set two. Uh, one for Gundam The Origin. And it looks like the Origin one that is kind of mostly for the Shars Zaku 2 and the Gundam Local type. Actually, a lot of them are for the Gundam Local type. And then a, a few for other kits as well. Double uh, O, which look like they're kind of mostly for just kind of two different kits there. Unicorn, which it looks like there's a, a lot of them are like sleeves markings. And then, of course, a lot of them are for the different uh, Unicorn Gundams. And then uh, Double Zeta Gundam, strangely enough. And again, those look like, it's basically like a lot of Titans markings, Ayug markings, and uh, like a couple of other different random things like the Bau, things like that. So those are interesting. I You know you can pre-order those on Hobby Link Japan. I think a couple of them are, are already like order stops, so they've already gotten like so many pre-orders for those. I think I pre-ordered a couple of those sets. Uh, but those will be pretty nice. It's always nice to get some nice new Bandai water slide decals. Uh, next, getting into just a whole bunch of like figure stuff that was announced. Just kind of try to get through this relatively quickly. The There is a Converge white base coming out. This is uh, number 150 in the Gundam Converge line. So they're kind of celebrating that by making a Converge white base. So no official release date or price set for that yet, but probably going to be, I would imagine, around 3,000 yen. For that is kind of what these kind of larger Converge uh, figures usually go for. Also, the Exceed Model Zaku Head Collection Volume 2 is going to be out in August for 500 yen. As you guys have probably seen around online, a lot of people have been really enjoying these Exceed Zaku Head model kits. So it's not really a model kit, it's like a Gashapon kind of uh, thing. But uh, we've already been seeing a lot of really cool like custom builds and custom paint jobs of these Zaku heads. And there is going to be a Volume 2 coming out in August. Uh, this one is going to include one for Johnny Ridden, one for uh, Shin Matsunaga, White Wolf version, uh, and I don't know, I think that's the Black TriStar version. And then there's also a Secret Rare version as well. I don't know what that's going to be, but that's just kind of the Secret Rare. We don't usually know what the Secret Rare versions are going to be until they come out and someone gets one and says what that is. Uh, other other like Gashapon and conversion things also sometimes do that secret rare thing where it's just a color variation in some other different colors. Uh, there's also going to be the Gashapon Mobile Suit Ensemble Series 3. Uh, a lot of people have asked me to uh, kind of do a review or something or show what these ensemble kits are about, these Gashapon. Uh, I'm not really interested in these. I don't really like the way that they look, so I probably won't ever get any of these, but Series 3 is going to be out in July for 500 yen each. There, they are the uh, TR1 Hazel, the Hrududu for using that for the Hazel, uh, the Zeta Gundam, the Ak Guy, and another Hazel equipment set, which is just other Hazel different random equipment that you can use to make many, many different variations of the Hazel Gundam. So that's, I mean, I love, I love some advanced Zeta. Hazel stuff is cool, but yeah. There is also, though, going to be a P Bandai. Mobile Suit Ensemble EX3 Gundam TR1 Hazel Custom Titans version set. So this is going to be out in September for 4,000 yen, so very pricey for this. But um, it's basically the Hazel in the Titans color version, so it's like the, the dark color version of that. And it comes with the, the Gaplant like long booster, the Gaplant, uh, like large booster thing. 
Uh, it actually comes with two of those, so one in the Titans colors and one in the test type colors, so that you can use the white one with, if you get the set three and you have the regular uh, hazel in that, you can use that white version with that white hazel. Uh, so it's quite cool actually, and it says with the Gundam with the long booster attached to it is 18 centimeters long, so it's like quite big, I guess, something like that, but 4,000 yen for this set is kind of a lot for a, like a, a Gashapon set, but if you're a big Hazel and Advanced Zeta fan, I mean, you can make a lot of cool Hazel variants with all of that stuff, so. Uh, P Bandai Gashapon Senshi Forte X01, EX01 Penelope. So uh, this Senshi Forte series, they're doing, a, a, I guess now, some like kind of these larger EX series as well. First one is going to be here, the Penelope. It's going to be out in June for 2,000 yen. Again, for just a small Gashapon, 2,000 yen is quite a lot, but that will be out soon in June. And then also going to be following that with the P Bandai Gashapon Senshi Forte EX02 Psycho Gundam. So no information about the release date or price of that, but probably July or August and probably also similarly around 2,000 yen, I would imagine, for that. P Bandai Robot Damashi White Base Catapult Deck anime version. It's going to be out in September for 2,700 yen. So it's just like a extra thing you can use for displaying your uh, anime version Robot Damashi old Gundam figures. And then there's also going to be the P Bandai Robot Damashi White Base Hanger Deck anime version uh, in September as well for 3,500 yen. So that's basically, it looks like, like almost basically the same thing that came with uh, the G Fighter, I think that was, that was the other figure that came with that. Uh, there's also going to be a Robot Damashi, speaking of, GM Canon anime version. So another in the anime version series, this is the GM Canon. It's going to be out in September as well for 5,500 yen. Uh, of course, the GM Canon is a really cool GM design. Uh, the, I recently, not too long ago, reviewed the P Bandai Master Grade version of that. And last thing here is the Formania X Sazabi. So the Formania X the New Gundam, I think, uh, has been out for a little while now. And now they're also going to be doing the Sazabi. The Sazabi is going to be out in September as well for 27,000 yen. So yeah, around $250 for this. It's quite expensive, but it's like super detailed. It's all like all pre-painted and there's like all this inner frame detail and like the funnels are there on the funnel racks on the backpack and you have like this extra like maintenance robot thing that you can have on a wire like flying around and stuff and it's a really cool like display for sure it's very expensive though so uh yeah that'll be out in september so that's all like the new news or like new like figure stuff that was announced now i would normally go through like all the figure stuff that we knew already knew was coming out and give you guys kind of like updates on that but it's not really any any updates on any other figure stuff so if you guys want to know about what other figures are actually coming out uh you can check last month's episode i'm not going to uh, go through all of those again in this episode. I will just kind of recap uh, some of the other actual Gunpla kits that are coming out uh, that I have talked about before, but I'll just quickly run through these. The P Bandai uh, Perfect Gray 00 Riser Trans M version is going to be out in June for 29,700 yen. There's also going to be the P Bandai uh, Perfect Gray 00 Riser Trans M Clear Armor Set out in June as well for 4,000 yen. So this is just the armor set for that and all clear. So you would have to have the regular uh, regular PG double riser first. Uh, and so, yeah, that's quite expensive. Uh, anyway, the P Bandai Master Grade Providence Gundam Dragoon Effect Part Set is also out in June for 2,200 yen, which just gives you uh, actual water slides for the, P, uh, for the Master Grade Providence and all of the Dragoon effect parts and base uh, for that. So that actually looks pretty nice, actually, if you if you have that kit, if you like that kit. Uh, there's also the P Bandai HG The Origin Zaku 1 Black TriStar Color version out in June for 1,700 yen. This, uh, again, is just a color swap of the regular Zaku 1. The only thing new about this kit is that it has a slightly different bazooka. I talked about in the last month's episode that if you just wanted to make this yourself and not actually buy this kit, just repaint it and then you can make that bazooka yourself by just cutting off the ammo where the ammo plugs into that bazooka and just going over that putty sand that and there you go uh, but if you're lazy you can pick up this p bandai kit uh, also the p bandai hguc zaku 3 kai 
out in June for 1900 yen. This is the Zaku 3 that appears in the Twilight Axis uh, new uh, movie kind of video thing that's coming out. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really super old kit, <laughs> but comes with quite a lot of different weapons. It's because it's kind of like a mix of, like the weapons included with that are like a mix of actual weapons from three other different kits, from three different kits. Uh, there's also the P-Bandai HD Iron Blood Orphans Pluma set that uh, looks like it's coming with six plumas in there, uh, coming out in June for 1800 yen. So if you wanted some more plumas for your display or something diorama, be a good chance to get those. Uh, P-Bandai Master Grade Crossbone Gundam X2 Kai is out in June as well for 4500 yen. Really looking forward to that, actually. Uh, that's also a Verka kit I should mention as well. It's just a Verka... Uh, Crossbone X2, Kai, yeah, looks awesome. All right, and uh, Gundam Iron Blood Orphans, we have the Iron Blood Orphans Gundam Dantelion that is out in June as well for 1600 yen. That's looking pretty awesome. We saw some new images of that, of what the kit looks like, just straight out of the box without any paint or anything. Looks as you would expect uh, an HD Iron Blood Orphans kit to look. Uh, sorry, yeah, HD Iron Blood Orphans. Um, and there's things that I like and things that I don't like about the design, but overall I think it'll be a really interesting build, so I'm looking forward to that. I do really like how the huge sword, when it's folded up uh, into the rifle, actually looks quite cool. I really like the look of that uh, weapon. Also, the HG Armblood Orphans Gunnam Astaroth Renascimento. Rina uh, trying to pronounce that correctly. Renascimento. That probably wasn't right. Anyway, but uh, this is going to be out in July. For 1800 yen, this one as well. There, there's things about it that I like and things that I don't like. It's basically like a, a kit-bashed Astroth Gundam, where instead of actually kit-bashing yourself, it's just it's already kit-bashed for you, so you can have that. But there's some cool aspects of it uh, for sure. So I'm looking forward to checking that out anyway. The Astroth's an interesting design. Not really a big fan of like the knife V fin, but uh, everything else looks pretty cool. And last thing here is the HG uh, Pucci guy. The or um, yeah, HD Pucci guy, Petite guy, the Kara guy, Gyanko and Fumina. So just we have these Kara guys. Hopefully they only do these two of them. They don't get too carried away with these. But at least we're getting the Gyanko and Fumina versions are going to be out in June for 900 yen each. Now, quickly before we finish here, there's a couple of third-party things I don't want to talk to you guys about quickly. And quickly, quickly. All right, the Master Grade Testament Gundam from Dragon Momoko will be coming out soon. Uh, we don't exactly know yet. We do have like full color images of what the kit looks like, uh, but no, as far as I've seen at the moment, no release date or price set for that. Uh, but I would imagine that that'll be out soon and for a very reasonable price. But uh, so I'm looking forward to that actually, actually quite a bit. I think that looks like a really cool kit for sure. I like the design of the Testament Gundam, and I think that uh, Dragon Momoko's styling there looks pretty cool. The chest is a little bit oddly shaped. It's kind of like a very just kind of oddly shaped, like a box, sort of. But uh, I, that could just be the pictures. I mean, once I actually like, have the kit in hand, it might not actually look as bad as I think it looks. But overall, I think it does look quite cool. There is also the 1100 Stargazer Gundam Resin Conversion Kit from Model Bingo. Kind of wish this was just a regular plastic kit, but even then, I'm not sure I would get it because it uh, it doesn't really look as good as I think it, it could look. Like, for example, if Dragon Momoko did a Master Grade, uh, Master Grade Stargazer Gundam, I think it would probably look better than this, to be honest. But if you really wanted a really like highly detailed 100 scale Stargazer Gundam, you can pick up this resin conversion kit. The problem is it's going to be quite expensive, around $120. Uh, it is also going to be using some plastic parts here uh, for the kind of uh, light up parts in it and for the, the green rings around there. It is going to be uh, uh, what they've said is going to be UV reactive plastic. So we going to be very reactive to UV light or black light there. Um, you do have to have a Master Grade Impulse Gundam for the base for that. So it'll be using the inner frame of the Master Grade Impulse Gundam and then you put all the resin conversion stuff around the outside of that. Uh, a couple other things here is uh, from Model Legend, the high-grade uh, Gundam Dynamis Torpedo is a resin conversion kit of the high-grade Gundam Dynamis. Here, uh, again from Model Legend, Model Legend uh, does these kind of resin conversion kits and a lot of times for 1144 1, 1, scale. So 
This one is going to be $40. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess, might seem a little bit expensive, but um, I think that does look quite cool, actually, to be honest. That huge gun, it looks pretty awesome for that. Not really a big fan of the Dynamace, to be honest, personally, but uh, I, I'm almost tempted to get that just for that weapon and then just give it to some other kit. Uh, also, there's going to be an HG Cher Cheridim Gundam Saga. It's kind of interesting name, Cheridim Gundam Saga. Is another resin conversion kit, obviously, for the Cheridim Gundam. Again, from Model Legend, and again, in this case, also $40. So we don't have any like painted color images of what the kit is going to look like, actually, once it's all painted, but we can see just some uh, uh, primed kind of uh, prototype images there. And this one also looks kind of interesting. Again, if you're a fan of that Gundam, it's a kind of cool variant of that. Where you can buy these kits... I'm not too sure. I know there's different websites and it depends on where you live, I guess, where I would recommend you buy them from. So what I would recommend is just asking maybe in like a local group, like if you live in North America, ask in some Facebook group or something that is like based in North America. Or if you live in the Philippines, ask in some group that's based in the Philippines. Or, you know, there's other sites like Google you could try. Uh, I'm just letting you guys know that these kits exist. Actually finding them and buying them I'll leave that up to you guys. So that is it for this month's episode of Gunpla News. Uh, yeah, so had a lot of really big news today out of Shizuoka. Uh, there'll probably be some more news sort of trickling out maybe, or at least just some more and better photos, more information, things like that trickling out over the next few days. So just wanted to kind of give you guys a recap of everything that came out just here in the first day. It's been really busy. My phone has been like blowing up all day with all like the news and alerts and all this stuff, people commenting and all this kind of thing. So it's been crazy and uh, quite tired now. So as always, thank you guys for watching. If you have questions, comments, I'm sure you guys have a lot to talk about, all the new kits. Um, have a conversation down in the comment section down below. And uh, as always, just thank you guys so much for watching. I have a video coming up uh, very soon for you guys showing uh, my latest completed build and another build that is almost complete that I'll be sharing with you guys shortly as well. So stay tuned for that and just kind of the normal things you would expect here on my cookie cutter channel. And that's it. See you guys. Bye bye.